Hello everyone, myself Vimal Saloth from LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. I welcome all of you to this session of numerical problems. Particularly in this subject, numerical problems are from machining chapter and from the casting chapter. So let us start the problems from machining chapter. So let's see the given data. A taper pin of length 90 mm has a taper of 52 mm. The larger diameter of taper is 85 mm and the smaller diameter is 75 mm. Determine the angle to which the compound rest should be swiveled and second point the tailstock set over distance. So the data given is about taper turning and we know that there are certain methods by which we can produce the taper on the given workpiece. So here two answers we have to find out. First is the angle to which the compound rest should be swiveled. That is first method by swiveling the compound rest we can do taper turning and second method is by set over the tail stock. So that set over distance we require to find out. So here the larger diameter of taper is 85, smaller diameter is 75. Total length of pin is 90 mm and among that taper length is 52 mm. So let us first understand the drawing so that we can have the better idea of the problem. So it is the given taper pin larger diameter of this taper part this part is taper part and this larger diameter is given as 85 mm smaller diameter of taper is 85 mm so it is a smaller diameter of taper and it is given as 75 mm so larger diameter is 85 smaller diameter is 75 length of the taper is given as 52 mm so it is the taper length and it is given as 52 mm and total length of this pin so total length of pin is given as 90 mm now let's find out the angle to which the compound rest should be swiveled we know that it can be found by using the equation 10 alpha equal to d minus d by 2 l this equation you require to remember where capital D is larger diameter of the taper and small d is the smaller diameter of the taper and small l is length of the taper. So substitute these values in this equation capital D is 85 small d is 75 and taper length as 52 and 52 into 2 that is 104 so answer is 0 0.096 and now alpha is equal to 10 inverse of 0 0.096 so angle alpha is 5.48 degree it is the required answer compound rest should be swiveled at 5.48 degree to produce the required taper next question is find out the tailstock set over distance. This distance can be found by using the equation offset distance O is equal to capital D minus small d by 2L into capital L. So here this capital L is total length of the workpiece and it is given as 90 mm. We know this answer D minus D by 2L already we have calculated here it is 0 0.096 so substitute these values in this equation 0 0.096 into 90 so offset distance is 8.64 mm it is required to offset the tailstock by 8.64 mm to produce the required taper so it is a question about taper turning operation next question it is required to perform knurling operation on a brass workpiece. 
So material of the workpiece is brass. The diameter of workpiece is 45 mm and cutting speed for the brass for this operation, this operation means knurling operation. So for this operation, the cutting speed is 40 meter per minute. Calculate required RPM of the lathe spindle. We know that we can provide different spindle speed as per the requirement. So now this spindle speed depends on some parameters. Those parameters are workpiece material, cutting tool material, type of the operation, condition of the machine, finishing required and skill of the operator. So these are certain criteria or the parameters on which cutting speed depends. From material to material it may be variable, from cutting tool material it may be also variable. So for the for example if workpiece material is SS and if workpiece material is aluminum for both of kind this workpiece we cannot run the machine at the same speed for the same operation. Okay. So from material to material of the workpiece the speed is different. So here in this particular example the cutting speed is 40 meter per minute and brass is the material of the workpiece. Now we know that cutting speed V is equal to pi dn by 1000. You require to remember this equation where V is the cutting speed in meter per minute. Cutting speed is the peripheral speed of the workpiece by which it is passing past a cutting tool. So it is given in meter per minute. D capital D is the diameter of the workpiece and N is the spindle RPM. So here this diameter of the workpiece is we have to take in mm and the cutting speed is meter per minute. So D is divided by 1000. So this equation V is equal to pi dn by 1000. It is required to be remembered. Now let's substitute the values. So we want to find out the spindle RPM that is N. Capital N is the spindle RPM and RPM means revolution per minute. So keep N as the subject. So N is equal to 1000 into V by pi D. Substitute the values of V and D in this equation. So 1000 into 40 by pi into diameter of the workpiece and it is 45 mm. So required spindle speed is 283.08 rpm. It is the final answer. Now how we can calculate the machining time? So it is the example from the shaper machine. So let's take L is equal to length of the workpiece. B is equal to width of the machined surface in mm. X is approach length. Y is the over travel length. Now what is approach length and what is over travel length? So let us understand this. So suppose it is a workpiece surface. We want to machine on this surface. So it would be the length of the workpiece. It is width of the workpiece and now cutting tool has to move from this point to this point. Along this length it has to be machined. So cutting tool exit it doesn't start to cut or to approach from this point. It has to move some distance like this from this point it will start to move. So this much length is known as the approach length and suppose cut is finished here so it will not stop just at this point but it has to move by certain distance over the workpiece length. So that length is known as over travel length. So X and Y are approach and over travel length. F is feed in mm per full stroke. Now in case of shaper machine 
we know that it has two strokes forward stroke or cutting stroke during which cutting action takes place and return stroke during which cutting action doesn't take place so it is idle stroke so feed in mm per full stroke it means that when it completes forward stroke and return stroke it is known as a full stroke so at the end of the full stroke the workpiece is fed by the table so that feed is given in mm per full stroke vf is the cutting speed during forward stroke in shaper machine both of the speed will be different as i told you cutting during forward only the cutting takes place so that is the productive stroke but during return stroke it doesn't perform any cutting action so that stroke is idle stroke and to increase the productivity to we require to minimize the idle time so in case of shaper machine generally cutting speed during return stroke is higher so it is faster stroke as compared to forward stroke now machining time is given by this equation tm is equal to b by f into l by vf into 1000 plus l by vr into 1000 you have to remember this equation now let's take example a workpiece of 250 mm by 350 mm is to be machined on a shaper so generally length is considered as higher side so 350 mm is the length and 250 mm is the width of the workpiece calculate machining time if cutting speed during forward stroke that is given by vf is equal to 10 meter per minute and vr so it is cutting speed during a return stroke it is given by vr is equal to 20 meter per minute and f is the feed it is 5 mm per stroke over travel and approach both are 50 mm so total length is 350 plus over travel plus approach so total is 450 mm length machining time tm now we know the equation so put the values in this equation b is the width of the machined surface so it is given as 250 mm and f is the feed 5 m so 250 by 5 and put all the other values in this equation so you will get the answer as 3.4 minute mind well it is the answer it is the machining time for one pass of the cutting tool if number of passes are more suppose the job completes in total five passes then you have to multiply by five 3.4 into five so after five passes it will be completed so this time this machining time is 3.4 minute for a single pass now another examples are from casting chapter we require to measure optimum pouring time so we will consider two examples for cast iron casting and for the steel casting so in the case of cast iron if mass of the casting is less than 450 kg then it requires to use this formula T is equal to capital K into 1.41 plus capital T by 14.59 into square root of w where k is equal to fluidity of iron in inches by 40 capital t is the thickness it is average thickness in mm and w is the mass of the casting in kg now if casting is having mass greater than 450 kg then pouring time can be calculated from the equation T is equal to K into 1.236 plus capital T by 14.5 into square root of W but in case of steel casting pouring time is calculated by using the equation T is equal to 2.4335 minus 0.3953 log W where base is 10 
into square root of w now let's see the example so calculate the optimum pouring time for a casting of mass 100 kg and thickness of 25 mm so mass of the casting is 100 kg and average thickness capital T is 25 mm fluidity of cast iron is 32 inches from this data we can calculate constant K calculate the pouring time for cast iron and steel casting so let's first calculate the pouring time for cast iron so in case of cast iron first we require to check the mass of the casting it is 100 kg it is less than 450 kg so if it is less than 450 kg then we require to use this first formula now we can find out constant k it is the ratio of fluidity fluidity of the iron in which is it is given as 32 so 32 by 40 capital T is the average section thickness in mm it is 25 and w is mass of the casting is 100 kg substitute these values in this equation and you will get the answer time t is equal to 2496 seconds for steel casting optimum pouring time can be calculated by using this formula here log w is to the base of 10 so put all these values in this equation and you will get the answer pouring time t is equal to 16.429 seconds in case of a steel casting thank you for watching